Here at Paddy Power, we're the home of the Money Back Special, with some incredible offers every single week. Check out the website or app today. Terms and conditions apply. 18plusbegumbleaware.org. Hello and welcome to this Friday Tipping Postcast. I'm Maddie Plow, joined in the studio by the tipping maestro, Paul Keeley. We have Keith Melrose and Darren Hughes on the line from Paddy Power as well. We're going to look ahead to the ITV races this weekend. Air tomorrow, of course, and then good quality action from Newbury as well. But it is air and the, mainly the Air Gold Cup, which takes centre stage. Really competitive brilliant betting handicap to get our teeth stuck into. Let's crack on with that card then. The two o'clock is the race we're going to start with. It's the William Hill Foundation uniting against dementia handicap over a mile, naught to 105, three-year-old plus handicap. Keel's one-year-old mates is in here at Kinron. What a frustrating horse he's been. Yeah, he's a frustrating horse. And, uh, you know, you don't want to be, don't want to knock him too much because he keeps running so well. Yeah. His massive field handicaps are really valuable ones. And, you know, there probably aren't that many horses that deserve a win as much as he does. And it's one of those, he could turn up here and he could just say, right, well, I'm better than you lot and, mm. and, and win quite easily. But he's easy enough to resist. I mean, he's shorter than, he's shorter than three to one now, isn't he? Like, you know what I mean? So I would, you know, I would be tempted to oppose him. I have opposed him with um, Richard Fat. He's a reverend who I just think is uh, a... A horse going forwards. He's just been progressing all season. He's won three times. He won at air in June and he really skipped around the course and thoroughly enjoyed it. Not over enamoured with a draw in stall 11, I must admit, on the round course because, uh, you know, you probably want to be a bit lower, but it's not, you know, it's not like some of the tracks where it's impossible to win from hard draw. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll take him. I mean, he's been putting first time cheek pieces, which is smart, which surprised me a little bit because he has been keen in the past. But he settled lovely at third, going to four run a race last time, and it might just be a case that he's growing up now. Uh, and I think he will go close. Richard Fahey has won the race a couple of times as well. So. Mm, yeah, only two from the last nine of one from double figure draws. You were saying there about where you like to be and, and that sort of thing. At air, have you got any sort of punting pointers for people who, who might be looking at the track for the first time? Not really. I mean, you get to the, you know, we, we come go to all the festivals and air is, is sort of the last one and a lot of the racing isn't at the highest quality. And then you get these massive field handicaps at the end and you don't know what the ground's going to be until the, in, until the week coming up. So uh, I don't I don't pay that much attention. I mean, obviously on the round course, low is a bit of an advantage. Yeah. Um, Darren, just clarify the prices for us then. Kim Renazki was said a, a short favourite. Yeah, he is plenty short here, Maddie. He's our five to two favourite in what is a competitive field. Uh, Irreverent then killed selection is in at nine to two. Club Western is eight. Mile to Mile is eight. Warriff is tens. Gulf of Poe is elevens. Portador is twelves. Kylie Roof is twelves, and it is fourteens and bigger the rest. Brilliant. So you look at Kimran's form. He was second in a Lincoln and a Victoria Cup, fifth in the Royal Hunt Cup, and third in the Clipper Logistics Handicap last time. Darren, he could win this if he wanted to, and everything fell right for him. What do you think? Who's your fancy? Yeah, look, he's probably, well, there's no probably about it. In terms of raw ability, he's the best horse in the field. But he's just, he's very short for a horse that hasn't won a race in two years. You know, he keeps kind of being there and thereabouts. And that's not the type of horse I look to back in these in races like this. I found it tough enough to find him to oppose him. But the one I'm going to take a chance on is the one down the very bottom, Boston George, 14 to 1 outsider. Uh, he's the least exposed in the field. He's only had six career starts. And I thought he ran a fairly good race the last time. He looked like he was fading out of it. Um, and he was going to fall out the back of the television, but he stayed on again nicely. I think he's just a little bit idle or a little bit lazy. He's he has first time cheek pieces here, and some of his back form would give him a fairly decent chance. He looked like one that's still improving, so I'm going to take a chance on him to uh, come out on top here. Okay, Keith, throw your hat into the ring. What do you think of this first race? I'd sort of echo what the guys have said a little bit there about Kinran. Uh, I think. I would be even more forgiven for him, really, because from what I've seen in the last couple of starts, at least, he's not really done an awful lot wrong. He'd have been closer to the first two at York, and he'd not been tightened up in the last furlong. And I do think that he just fully deserves to be that sort of price. But I think behind him, it's not actually that strong a race, particularly. Uh, considering the, the grade and, and the fact that it's on the telly on a Saturday, the one I'd be actually taking a bit of a flyer on is, is Hortzadar, the Mara horse in there now. He'd been, it's his first year with the Mara, he'd come from France and he'd started improving, was third year and then he, he won at Ripon. And then he went over for the uh, Irish Cambridgeshire and he travelled through that race really well. He was one of the last off the bridle and lost about six places in the last hundred yards. He shaped a lot better than finishing 12 to 25, suggests in that race and potentially been a little bit dismissed off the back of it when before then he was an improving horse. You wouldn't see he wasn't anymore after that run particularly and 
just thought 12 was a bit big. Okay, uh, okay. let's move on to the 240, which is the William Hill Air Silver Cup over six furlongs. A really interesting contender here in Alcarama. Uh, so Michael Stout running him up to air. That's He's 20 from 83, 24% at air overall, Sir Michael Stout. So very interesting that he's chosen to send him to this race. Uh, just run us through the prices, Darren. I imagine he'd be towards the top of the market. You're dead right, Maddie. Yeah, well, first of all, I'll just say we are five places in this race. So you have a fairly decent chance of getting a few quid out of it. But um, Alcarama is indeed our 72 favourite. Lahore then to Philip Macon is 15 to 2. Joe Steeler is 10. Admiralty is 12. Royal Residence is 12. Golden Apollo is 12. Prime Pursuit is 12. Citroen Major is 14. Get Not at his 14. And it's 16. And the rest. Thanks very much. I absolutely butchered that name, didn't it? Alcarama. Alcarama? Alcarama. Uh, Keith, we'll go to you first anyway. Yeah, um, I'm actually going to look at some Irish form again being potentially key to this. Uh, Admiralty is the one I really fancy at uh, about 14 to 1 each way. Barely run a bad race this year for Roger Fell. He came from Johnny Morto's yard and has uh, yeah run really, really well in a lot of good handicaps. He was third in the Bunbury Cup. He, he won his side in the International and then at Leperstown last time, he was drawn widest of all. He was in the car park in 17, trapped four wide all the way around, and still came there with a really good run inside the last long or so that just petered out in the last 50 yards because he'd run 50 yards further than everything else. Uh, I think he's got a smashing chance of running in a place. Okay, brilliant. Um, and Keel's snazzy jazzy won this last year, so he's been a pretty good horse. Who do you think can snare it this time around? Uh, well, I think it's really difficult. I mean, it's funny enough, we've got a favourite, you know, the trainer doesn't go up to air very often. He doesn't win big sprints very often. No. I don't think he's ever won an air gold cup. I don't think he's ever won a woke in him in his last Stewards Cup would have been 1983, I think. I had to look that up. It wasn't off the top of my head. Uh, um, so, you know, I'm, I can't, you know, I can never get excited about betting horses at single figures and 25 around a field. I'm going to take a flyer. It's funny, um, uh, Keith mentioned Roger Fell because I went for the other one, the, 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 the uh, bigger price one, Presidential. Now, he ran in the race last year. He finished seventh to Snazzy Jazzy. He's off the same mark. He's got Angus Villiers on board, who's, who, who's a very decent seven pound claimer, I think. He's been running. He's been running solid races pretty much all season, presidential, nearly all the time at seven furlong. In fact, the last time he ran over six was in this race last year. But, you know, if you look at all the top handicap sprints, you know, more than, I'd say, well over 50% of the winners of races like the Stewards Cup, the Wokenham, the Air Gold Cup, had form over further than six furlongs. And he's, he's fine if he gets a strong gallop. He will be finishing fast. He'll be out the back early. But he can travel okay. Uh... And although that was on heavy ground last year, three of his five wins have come on good to firm, so I don't think there's grounds any worry. He's joining stall nine. He's got, uh, I think he's got Lincoln Park one side of him and Hyperfocus the other side, two or three stalls away. Uh, Perfect, then. Both uh, go forward. So I think he's in the right place, so I'll take a chance. Yeah, and uh, I think he's been well-backed a couple of times, hasn't he, presidential? Yeah, he has. I mean, you know, he's not the most consistent, you know, he's not the most uh, prolific uh, of winners, but he's definitely got ability. Uh, and obviously, trainers going well, won the Portland last week with Oxted. Okay, so a couple of big price runners then. Darren, are you going to add to that? Yeah, well, I'm not going for the fab anyway, I suppose. And after that, they're nearly near enough all big prices. The, the one I'm going to take a chance on is show stealer for Ray Guest. Uh, I thought he ran a massive race behind Oxted last week, uh, which I thought was near enough career best. And I just wonder, could he could he go and build on that this weekend? Uh, he's drawn well. He's the sandside rail, uh, or near enough. And he's the likes of Major Valentine and Savlas to tow him into the race, which will suit him perfectly. Just with the five places on offer, I thought he was rock solid to be there, thereabouts, and hopefully he can get his head in front. Brilliant. Uh, we're going to look at the first of the Group 3s now, the 315 again at air, the William Hill Firth of Clyde Stakes, been won by some beautiful fillies in the last couple of years, again over the six furlongs, and all Laith, I imagine, she'll be uh, towards the top of your betting after winning the listed St Hughes Stakes last time, Darren. Yeah, Orla is indeed our, she's our 3-1 to one favourite here, Maddie. Uh, Lambert Walk then is in at 5-1, to one. Al Razma is 6, is Rosa Kildare for uh, Mark Johnson is 7-1. to one. Piece of Paradise is eights, Alan Ava is nines, Grace and Magic is nines, and it's twelves and bigger the rest. Yeah, Keith, personally, I'm not sure where I stand with this sort of division. I find it a bit muddling, so it might be interesting to see your opinion on the likes of Al Razma and Alan Eva, who have both won just their maidens. What do you think? Well, that's right, and with, with look at it being a Group Three race and a big jump up, but it's you know it's a race for fillies, and they often don't take quite as much winning. If you've got a horse that can run to about a hundred on on racing post ratings, you've got a fighting chance of at least making the frame. So you maybe want to entertain horses like Cal Rasma and, and Alan Eva. In fact, 
I'd probably be inclined to go towards the latter of my selection for this race. She's bred to be really quite good. She was fairly strong in the betting on her debut there when she beat Walken Marrakesh, who looked really forward on her debut and is now obviously rated like 99 or so. She was touched off in a, a US grade one. She's uh, obviously in turn out to be quite a useful filly. And Alan Eva, who was obviously more green than her that day when they ran at Haydock, was, uh, was able to fend her off. She's not run since, and that's you know, three months off. It's a little bit of a concern. But to go straight into a, a Group 3 with her on the way back, considering they also have Al Razma, who won a maiden far more recently, uh, suggests that they're going to have Alan Eva here to, to really try and pick up that black type, and therefore she'll be fit enough. And on that basis, I think 9-1 is perfectly fair. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. I'm slightly surprised she's 9-1, to one, but I guess that absence probably explains that, Alan Eva. Good form in the book, albeit just her first start. Keels, what do you make of this lot? Well, you know, I, you know, it's one of those... I, I, I used to quite like this um, race, and I, I normally have a, a strong opinion on it, but I don't this time. I think it's a very weak renewal. I think Orlaith deserves to be favourite on that list in race success. Uh, the, you know, the... You know that Alan Eva's probably got about twenty pounds to find on pure RPRs on what she showed on what she showed first time, but you know you have no idea how much these horses are going to come on. Uh, she's not running in a Group Three for uh, just for the day out. Um, I've got a soft spot for Graceful Magic. Did me a big favour at Doncaster the other day, but she's got to step up quite dramatically because that was you know she's only gone up to a mark of eighty six for for winning that Doncaster Nursery. I think Orlave's the most likely winner, uh, but I sit this one out. Yeah, it's probably not a great race, is it, Darren? It's not, no, but I thought it was relatively straightforward, actually, to be fully honest. Um, look, a horse like Orlish took five goals to break her duck and then all of a sudden wins a listed race. That's not the profile of a horse I'm looking to back here. I thought uh, Lambert Walk had, had outstanding claims here. Like, remember, she was sent off only 14th to the Queen Mary. She ran all right. She went down to Newmarket, ran all right behind Rafa Prize. was quite good. And I'd say last time at Ripon, she was trying to give a lead to a horse who's probably a fair bit better than we might have thought he was. You know, Group 1 entered in, in, in Platinum Star. 5-1 to one here would look more than fair. I cannot possibly see her out of the frame. I'd have her out like five here based on um, on her performances earlier on in the year and I'd expect her to make amends and go and win. Yeah, a very, very early type Lambeth walk. We'll move on to the feature then, which is at 3.50. It's the William Hill Air Gold Cup. Six furlongs, a cavalry charge and the bold lad form will come to the fore here with Buffer Zone and Gulliver both reappearing after uh, Buffer Zone won the race. Gulliver was third, storming home unlucky. Uh, so a key bit of form, Darren. Uh, both of those are going to be well fancied, you'd suspect. Uh, they are, yeah, they are indeed, Manny. They're, they're pretty much at, at the head of the market. So um, Buffer Zone, Fergie, our Lions, rare runner for him over in Scotland is a uh, 5 to 1 5. Summergan then for David Amara is 8. Gulliver for David Amara also is 8 to 1. Arecibo's 10s, Major Jumbo's 14s, Laugh Minutes 14s, Intersab is 14s, and it is 16s and bigger the rest. Okay, thanks. Keels, I'll go to you first. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's funny, this race, the Buffer Zone obviously won really well at the Curra, but Gulliver was was really unlucky. I mm. mean, he just didn't get, didn't get any sort of run at all, but he was 16-1 to one on Monday. He's half that now. He may go even shorter. Uh, I, you know, I fancy him. I backed him. Gulliver. Uh, yeah, Gulliver. Yeah. I think it'd go well, but you know, I'm 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 not the sort of on the day punter at eight to one in these sort of this sort of races. And uh, it's amazing what a strong hand David O'Mara has got, isn't it? And his his, yeah. his horses, like you know, uh, I backed Gulliver. I have backed Samagand and Arecibo pretty much all year uh, without any success at all. Uh, and I back in his ad whenever he runs, and have done for about three years. <laughs> uh, and they're all up there, and any one of them could win. But but you know, so I've decided not to back any of them, and instead my uh, uh, my next stab at the race, having already backed a non-runner in Don Juan Triumphant, is Hay Jonesy for Kevin Ryan, who's won the race five times now. He's quite an interesting horse. He was rated 110 last year. He, he wasn't beaten far in a Commonwealth Cup. He um, he wasn't beaten far in this year's um, Woken him either, beaten for about, about three and a half lengths. He's got plenty of pace. Trainers put a visor on him for the first time. He's had a break since running over seven furlong on, on easy ground last time. Uh, and he's just very interesting because, you know, like I said, the trainers won it loads of times. He's drawn in stall eight. Um, you know, I, I think I think only one horse has won from the highest five or lowest five in the last ten years, uh, mm. and that was Baron Bolt who dead eat last year. Um, so you know, you normally want they normally come down the middle in, in this race, uh, and I think Hey Jones, you've got bags of pace, 
Um, I think he'll run a bit. I think he'll run a big race. I mean, mm. you know, the one I fancy most is Gulliver, but I think the price has gone now. Yeah. So if I was if I was looking at this race fresh, I'll be back in Hey Jonesy. I've always liked him. He's a horse who has a lot of sort of natural talent, natural speed. He was a good two year old, wasn't he? But yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he ran well in a done. really good sales race at York. I think. Yeah, when he was on the wrong side, I think a lot yeah. of people remember that. He's he's sort of a bit triplus though almost isn't it like they tried him over five they tried him over seven i'm not sure what you think six is his optimum i think yeah well i mean you know, between six and seven and this will be a strong run this will be a strong run race uh he's got barriers of pace i don't, I don't know whether i don't know whether, whether he really wants seven anyway but mm. um, yeah but, you know I, I i like him and i you know i like the fact the trainer obviously uh, does really, really well in this race. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you mentioned Intersab. He'd be my pick. He's two from three at air, although he's a bit of an old boy now. He's four pound lower than his last winning mark. You mentioned Angus Villiers earlier on. He's taken seven off. And I thought his run at Doncaster last time was all right. So I'll take a stab at him at about 20 to one each way. Uh, Keith, who do you fancy for the Air Gold Cup? Well, Keogh just sort of hit it on there. We've got, we've got take your pick of however many, and I think maybe possibly align with him that Gulliver is maybe the one you would regard as, as the one you really fancy as a likeliest winner, given what happened to Curra last time. And the fact he's nine, uh, he, Jones, I think he's eight, and I, I suspect he's going to take them along on that first-time visor. He's fast enough as it is, and if the visor lights him up at all, I suspect he'll be the pace angle for the entire field. So I'm looking towards the sort of middle and erring on that very slightly lower side of the middle. And in 13, you've got... Uh, We've got Summergand, who I think is just the, the really solid option for an each way bet. He's, you know, his last four runs have been fifth in the Wokingham. He was then third in a little race at Haydock, fourth in the Stewards Cup, and then he actually caught the eye a little bit on how he finished in the the Great St Wilfred. He he really did finish strongly in that race, and obviously you're not going to catch the coat of gold who's gone on and won a couple of races since, and we're going to talk about in a Group Three shortly. So, uh, I. Yeah, you can take any one of umpteen, but I think if I'm having a bet in this race tomorrow, it's each way on Summergand. Okay, you've backed him a couple of times, haven't you, Summergand? Yeah, like I said I've backed him pretty much all season since uh, since the, since um, Craven meeting at, at Newmarket. I yeah. backed him when he was second now, and I backed him pretty much every time afterwards. So uh, now that I've deserted him, it'll be his day, no doubt. <laughs> he's certainly holding his form anyway. He deserves to win a race. I mean, he's really he's a really gutsy horse who just seems to whatever the ground put it down. So yeah, he deserves to win a race. I like that rhyme. <laughs> Why <laughs> the ground put it down? Uh, Darren, who do you fancy? Uh, I should have just said it to Heather when I was calling out the prices. We're five places on this race as well, just like the, the Silver Cup. Um, I'm delighted to hear Keel's putting up Hey Jonesy. It's one of my two against the field. Uh, I've stuck him up here in the podcast, I'd say, a million and one times. Uh, he's the resident Darren Hughes Cliff Horse. I just echo what Keel said, as in, like, he has the back for it to be competitive in a race like this. Lovely draw as well. And yeah, he's definitely on my shortlist. The other one then was. Um, Another horse is probably the class edge, I'd say, over the rest of the field in the shape of Major Jumbo. The old boy, this is the easiest race. Well, I won't say the easiest race, but it's probably the lowest grade of race he's running in a while. You know, he's been there and thereabouts in some of the massive sprints all year in the big group races. This is a slight drop in class, and I just thought he might be solid enough for the places uh, at a decent price. OK, uh, we will look at Newbreed's ITV Racing just after this break. But before we do, just a reminder to subscribe to our members club. You get access to all our in-depth data, unlimited race replays of the British and Irish races. So head to racingpost.com for more on that. So does an each way bet mean that my horse has to do part of the race in reverse? Everyone loves a newbie. That's why Paddy Power Games are giving all new customers 60 free spins on daily jackpot games. New Paddy Power Games customers only. One per customer. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. Begumbleware.org. Welcome back to this Friday Tipping Postcast. And we're now going from air to Newbury. A good action there. At the 145 is our first port of call. And a good race it is too. The Dubai International Airport World Trophy Stakes. A group three over the five furlongs. And this race sees the really progressive Dakota Gold take on Charlie Hills. It's equilateral. So should be a bit of a burn up um darren presumably to go to gold i think he's ahead on ratings isn't he is he the favorite yeah maddie so uh go to gold is actually he is indeed our favorite but we're money back on this race if he goes and wins up to a max rate of 10 quid per customer and um, he is indeed then our 13 day favorite equilateral is 5 to 2 judicial is 11 to 2 hit the bid is 8 he stroke is 10 and it's 14 to figure the rest Fantastic, Darren. And do you think, uh, obviously, Garrow be winner last time out, do you think he can resume that progress? Um, look, yeah, he's obviously a very good horse and he's obviously improving very quickly, but his his price reflects as much. I just thought he might be worth taking on. Um, on a line through Queen's Gift, he is very little in hand over Judicial, and yet Judicial is 11-2 and Dakota Gold is, is uh, 13-8. 
like you have to bear in mind the code of gold is new to take for instance you know he's, he's coming out of handicap for his judicial is all at him um you know he's been running in stakes races with god with the gas and then he won't be very easily brushed aside i've never been an equilateral fan so i'm keen to swerve him and i just thought at the price of the judicial is worth having a flyer on okay uh dakota gold kills you a fan Oh, yeah, I don't think he can not be a fan of, you know, he's won three really good class two handicaps, stepped up in listed company, won again, won easily as well. Um, Looks pretty, pretty bomb proof, doesn't uh, it? But no, no, you, I think you have to take him on. The one thing that hasn't been mentioned is he is now running at five furlong on what is almost certainly going to be good to firm ground. And the last time he won over five furlong, or the last time uh, on good to firm ground, indeed the last time he won over five furlongs was in April 2017. He's been beaten 11 times since over the minimum trip. Uh, so you just wonder, yes, he's improved. He's obviously a much better horse now than he was then, and he might get away with it. But I don't think 5F, GF is his conditions. Uh, as Darren said, I would not trust equilateral as far as I could throw him. No. Uh, he, the race he won at Donkers the last time, the form horses, the other form horses in the race underperformed badly, and he still only scrambled home. Um, so I couldn't have him at all uh, and I think it's very tight between the rest so I'm going to take a chance on uh, the girl Lions filly Blue Aluru uh, four year old he was really really progressive last year I mean you know started off winning handicaps and I think won one off of Martin somewhere in the 70s but kept, kept on progression as she went on she actually beat hit the bid in one race she was getting a bit of weight then but I just thought she shaped really really well on her return it was only a couple of weeks ago at Navan which is a stiff five. I think she wants a, a pretty easy five on fast ground, and Newbies is fairly easy. Uh, and I think 14 to 1, I think she might run it. She travels really strongly, uh, and I, there's loads of pace in here. Obviously, Ornate will go blasting out, um, and Dakota Gold, you know, just that seems to be the way he runs as well. So there'd be lots of pace in the race. I think the race will be run to suit. She might not be good enough, but I'll take a chance. I like the sound of that very much indeed. Big price then, Blue Arulu for Keels. Uh, Keith. Uh, a lot of the similar work in the queues. There's going to be absolutely loads of pace in this race. You know, you've got the Dakota Gold going to blast off Orne, uh, Made in India just blasting off as well. It's just going to be a bit of a burn up. And my sort of conclusion with the notwithstanding the complaints that he is a bit of a funny old bugger, uh, is that it's just going to be set up potentially for equilateral. It's the one day that I maybe would trust him because, you know, apart from Dakota Gold, he's the only one in this race with proper group form. Uh, and the rest sort of have to step up if he can come on and, and give it a day where everyone else is going to be going blasting off in front of him. Uh, I think there's a case to be made. Obviously, last time he wasn't up to that sort of level of form, scrambled home against Queen's Gift, who would be, I think she's been placed very well to get a couple of listed places behind her the last twice, but he was caught in a pocket that day and would have eaten her by as far as he wanted, which generally isn't very far, to be fair, but he would have done it if, if he had got a clearer run. And uh, yeah, if there's ever a day this, this guy's going to, so you can trust him at all. It would maybe be one like this. Okay, so Keith thinks that Equilateral is definitely going to get the setup he needs to produce his best. That's key. Uh, Keel's obviously going for an outsider. And Darren, again, taking on Dakota Gold with Judicial. We'll move on now to a Group 3. It's the 220 Dubai Duty Free Legacy Cup Stakes, formerly the ARC Trial, of course. And Desert Encounter, who won this race in 2017, is back for more off the back of winning the Glory Stakes and the Winter Hill. He's been in excellent form, but he has a couple of three-year-olds um, taking him on, so it'd be interesting who the tipsters fancy. Darren, uh, Desert Encounter, I mean, he's been pretty good this season. He has indeed, Maddie. yeah. he. They can do, his last two runs have been pretty near, near enough career best for him, um, and it's good to see him in, in, in form like that. And conversely, then, he is our 64 favourite for this. Honda Sen is in at 94, Walshern is 92, Waddle Staff is 13 to 2, and Puebron rounds him out at 10. OK, uh, I'll go to you first, Keith, then. Who's your selection? Possibly in a small field, let's take a bit of a, a flyer on Waldstern. I uh, like that form. He absolutely scooshed in last time uh, over 10, when I think he's always going to be more of a mile and a half horse. He's a half brother, I think, for Vault Guys. He's by seeing the stars, shaped like a sort of mile and a half type last year when he was fourth uh, to Norway at, uh, at Newmarket uh, later in that season. I get the impression that they didn't quite get him right in his first couple of runs this year. He started relatively late. And then ended up, you know, it was his third start back by the time they got him going at Newmarket. And the form of that's actually worked out pretty well. The second finished in the same position, just beaten in a really warm race at Beverly the next time. The third's won since, the fourth and the fifth have both run well since. And they were even beaten 10, 12 lengths by, by Valstern in that race. So, and if you think he's, he has to improve to, to come up against uh, McCrin's Desert Encounter, but I think there's scope to do that. I think he's a group horse that's only just coming right. 
Okay, that's interesting then. Obviously, he's going to be getting a lot of weight, like Pondus, so from Desert Encounter, the old boy Kiels. Yeah, good hang on. I mean, it, 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 it's, you know, it's hard to get your head around the, the, the form horse being a seven-year-old in the form of his life when it comes to these middle-distance group, group, group races, but he is. I mean, he's just run really him. well. Mm. I mean, Spencer was absolutely motionless on him uh, when he scored at Goodwood, and then he really put his head down and battled at Windsor, and the horse he beat there was Matterhorn. He was quite well backed and was only beating the neck in the Group 2 Boomerang at Leopardstown on Saturday. Uh, and I think, you know, the others all have to step up. He does have, even with a £3 penalty, he does have a class edge, and he does act well on the track. And I'd be inclined to say that of, of the three short price favourites who are on, on Newbury's TV races, I'd be inclined to say he's the most solid. Yeah, I'm a big fan. It's good to see these old horses keep coming back. Like I said, previous winner of the race, likes the track, likes the distance and clearly in great form. Uh, Darren, what do you think? Yeah, like he's in his, his claims are very obvious, but my concern here was that the race wouldn't be run to suit. He's in a small field that very easily become tactical. There's no obvious pace for Pondus. And it's Pondus who I came down at. Like he's, he's obviously the least exposed in the field and you have to bear in mind he was only sent off four to one. Edward at Ascot, um, like, look, he didn't run much of a race that day. I'd say there's still improvement coming on his run the last day behind the day was quite good on conditions that mightn't have suited him perfectly. I think he could get a very soft lead here. He's probably still an improvement three year old, and in receipt of the gust of a stone off um, Desert Encounter, I think you can give him lots to think of it. Yeah, second in the Rose of Lancaster last time, Pondus behind a Dave, so. Good form in its own right, that, but arguably we'll have to step up. We'll move on now to the next race at Newbury, the 255. It's the Dubai Duty Free Mill Reef Stakes, a group two of the six furlongs. And there's a bit of a hype horse here in Pierre Lapin. He's a half-brother to Harry Angel, and we haven't seen him since May, but he looked good then, Kiels. He did look very good then. I and mean, it's one of those that, um, you know, the, the market has really sort of come round to him. He was eight to one on Monday. Um, I mean, I had, I had a few quid then. Uh, just thought I'd try because I think this race is weak. Basically, I think uh, I don't think any of Mystery Power's form stands up. Even though he got, he got thumped by Pinatubo last time, but the Group Two superlative that he won isn't isn't that good a form. And all his runs are over seven furlong, uh, which is unusual for a horse running in a six furlong Mill Reef. So I always thought he was a bit of a false favourite. Pierre Lapin, well, whether he should be favourite or not, based on one run in May. But like you said, he's a half brother Harry Angel. Harry Angel, incidentally, had one run in May and then turned up in the Mill Reef and, and, and then won it. And I can't imagine uh, that was the plan for either of them. So he, he had a problem. I'm sure Pierre Lapin has had a problem uh, before coming there. But he did not have look good at Haydock. I mean, yeah. he got messed around by the second and he just, he just blew them away. Uh, uh, and the form isn't that bad either, as it stands. And I think he's the most likely winner. Um, I, I, I hope he wins. I just don't rate many of the others. Shaden's the interesting one because Andrew Balding could have uh, a runner in the Firth of Clyde, uh, yeah. which would have been a slightly easier race for her. She was actually anti-post favourite for that. Um, but, you know, I'm going for potential over proven form. Yeah, I think a lot of people will in be inclined to do the same. Uh, you mentioned there the superlative form with Mystery Power. Malatry was fourth in the gym crack last time. That was quite an interesting run. But as you say, nothing really oozing that much star quality bar the favourite. Uh, Keith, do you sort of agree with Keels? To a large extent, yeah. You mentioned Shaden, and I would sort of point out that the Baldings always tend to run their best two-year-old in this, don't they? Yeah, but Philly... Yeah. Yeah, true enough. Um, that was the only that was the only thing that interested me because it was a filly and there's a filly there's a filly's group three out here. So mm, yeah, uh, yeah. I was sort of I mean I probably I just looked at it and, and sort of thought that and but it is a bit of a recommendation to do send one of this race and so but and, and I think you're quite right that this isn't the best Malifa I've ever been either and for that reason you know you have to respect Pierre Lapin's chance because he is probably the only one in this field that has, has potentially got that group of potential. Uh, Malatru was mentioned there, and I've got no particularly strong view in this race, but I did really like the way he ran in the gym crack. He was only his third run of his life, and he got caught a little bit behind, a little bit outpaced, and then kept on really well at the finish. I think he's a Group 2 horse, and he might well win a race at this level. It might be over further. And okay. that's sort of the, okay. uh, if that's why I would be sort of mild and, and cautious about betting him here, but uh, I do think he's apart from maybe Pierre Lapin, one of the few horses that would be up to this level in time, you might just need it to be a bit further. Okay, so a tough one to sum up then, Darren, really, because we're, as often is the case, sort of ranking potential against proven form. Which side would you be on? My, my rule of thumb in all these is generally decide on the, on the side of proven form. Um, 
potential is one thing and you know earlier on in the year maybe you can you can say the potential more so but I personally couldn't take five to two about a horse that hasn't been seen in four months who's only won a maiden beating a horse that's now rated what in the 70s or 80s pretty much a handicapper for all that he was impressive on the day I think mystery power's form is a little bit better than Keel gives the credit for um, beating Panel Cano like Panel Cano then without, was only beating the length by threat the last time and like well, I'm not saying you take that form absolutely what price would threat be here at this rate you know what I'm saying he'd be, I'd say he'd be a fairly warm order and um, Dropping back a six for mystery power probably isn't ideal, but he's the one I'm going to side with. Is in he's the form in the book in comparison to the rest of these. And uh, if Pierre Lafan turns out to be as good as Harry Angel, fair play to him, but I don't think this is that strong, and I don't think it'll take a lot of winning. So if mystery power can run to his mark, he should be very, very good. To see. Okay, you make a great case for mystery power then there. And the 3.30 is the next race we're going to look at, the Dubai Duty Free Handicap over a mile in two. Uh, really good race this. I'd, I'd argue one of the, the most interesting handicaps of the day. So it's good that we're saving the best until last. And I know you agree, Keith. I said, I said to you beforehand, didn't I, that this is uh, potentially the, the most interesting race we're sort of looking at today. But having a bet in it is maybe a, a different kettle of fish entirely. But you could put up... You could back a horse in this race, finish fourth and go for well, that's fair enough. That's run its race. It's such a competitive con- uh, affair that you could you could end up in that sort of position. Uh, the one I would nominate really is is migration. The everybody saw how he shaped at Sandown last time. You know he came from basically last to first in the space of a furlong up that hill, and just got reeled in at, at, at the death by Hyanna. He gets in off the same mark here. He's he's, ten, he's three pounds well in, and he gets to run off the same mark here. Uh, you know he's still got. Uh, he's got Jason Watson on again, and just think this horse is, is, seems bound to run another big race. But as I say, if he finishes third, he might well have run his race in doing so. Yeah, um, Kiel's I was a migration backer last time. You backed the winner, Hyanna. So you don't know what you're on about. Hyanna was obviously the best horse in the race. Yeah, he, I mean, you know, he might have gone a little bit too soon. Yeah, but I mean, these horses that need to be produce for just one run. I mean, they're not easy to win. They can't be easy to win with if they're going to stop. If they're going to stop running at the front, you know what I mean? It's, it is, stop it, making it's it. Not, you're rubbing it, salt into it my is wounds. Not, you know, <laughs> it, it can't be easy for jockeys to time that sort of run right because you don't know what's going to happen with the others. You've got to get there first. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then you've got to stay there. But, you know, to putting them on there, it just can't be easy. But anyway, you know, he's, he's obviously a decent horse. I mean, it must be, but in this race, there must be some anti-post hunters there. Really shaking their heads and uh, uh, in anger because Forrester Dean is Cambridgeshire favourite at the moment, and you cannot see him running in that next week mm. if uh, he runs here. Now the thing about this is he's five pound well in this race, and he's five pound higher in the Cambridgeshire, so you can understand why he's, why, why he's running. But if he wins this race, he gets another four pound penalty for the Cambridgeshire, so he's running of 105. Now he would, if he wins this, he'd have to run of 114 in the Cambridgeshire. So I think we can take it as ready. He ain't going. Because mm. uh, if he gets beat here, he ain't going, and if he wins, he ain't going in there off one one four. So, uh, kiss goodbye to your anti post bets there. I think he is quite obviously the most likely winner. He won really well at York last time. Uh, his last defeat was at this track. He's won three of his last four. That was in the that was in the London Gold Cup when he was fourth to Hebden, shaped really well then. Um, you know, there isn't you know, there's nothing to dislike about him. Yeah. Other than the fact that he's a short price and it's a good race. And I'm going to take a chance. There are several bookmakers offering four places. I'm going to take a chance on Exec Chef for Jim Boyle. He has run a stack of really good races in, in quality uh, handicaps this season, including when unlucky uh, uh, in a race uh, behind Jazil at Sandown a few starts ago when Hyanna was third and... I thought that Executive might well have won it if he'd have got the, if he'd have got the breaks, uh, and he ran here. He ran at Newby twice last year. He won over a mile, and then he won again over the course and distance. So he's two from two at the track. He's been freshened up. We know he goes fresh because he was second to Petrus in the Lincoln Consolation on his seasonal debut this season. Uh, and I think he'll just run a big race. Uh, and I, I prefer him as an each way bet than uh, ahead of quite a few of those ahead of him. Okay, uh, and Darren. Yeah, I'll just give a rundown of the prices here, Maddie, and just to also say, for Keel's sake, we are actually four places on this race. Um, Forest Dean is a 9-4 Fab. Great example from Steve Bintador is 6. Migration is 13-2. to two. Johnny Dram is 7. Paradox is 7. Gibbs Hill is 8. And it's 14 and bigger the rest. Um, the one I came down on here is, is not a horse. It's a horse with a profile of one I wouldn't normally back. But I just think it's very interesting that Roger Varian exists with, with Gibbs Hill. And I wonder just would, would he be the answer here dropping in trip. I thought he looked like strongly run 10 furlongs to be his optimum the last twice as opposed to the, the mile and a half. 
Um, as I said, like Horst coming back, he, he was two years off. He's pulled up on his comeback over two miles in Newcastle before. You know, he's been fourth and eighth the last twice. And that's, as I said, not the type of horse that normally back. But I thought there was definite signs of life last twice. And the fact that they are persistent with him is very interesting. We're eight to one. I think it's double digit, the double digit price is out there elsewhere. And he's the one I'm going to take a chance at. Okay, brilliant. Uh, that's all from Newbury then from this section. But have we got any other fancies on Saturday? Um, we have Air, Chelmsford, Newbury, Catrick, Newmarket, Goran and Wolverhampton just as a refresher. Um, Keith, I'll go to you first. Any other fancies that we've not mentioned yet? Um, uh, my sort of better deal being the, uh, the SES trial, the 355 at Newmarket. Now, Notwithstanding that the race at Foss last last week absolutely fell into his lap, they went too hard, and he's maybe a bit of a lazy so and so. But Blue Laurie has been shown like he's a talented horse for a long, long time, sort of horse that wants a real test. And what happened at Foss last showed that because they went too hard over two miles, and he swept by them and was was eased down in the end. He'll he'll get two and a half, eh, two and a quarter, standing on his head, they beefed up the head gear, which I think is actually a good thing. That's the sort of horse he is. And uh, Kieran Fallon still claiming three again. We know already what sort of judge he is of pace. And assuming they get another good test, I think he'll go very, very well in that race. It tends not to be a very strong race, even though it's got the highfalutin name of Sazadovic's trial. It tends to be, it can be a bit of a of a, an easier sort of race to win. OK, interesting insight there from Keith then. Keels? Yeah, got a couple. Um, Richard Fahey, uh, I'm kind of hoping he's going to have a good day because I've backed a, I've, I've, I've backed a couple of his... Uh, 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 here on Saturday, and um, another touch in the uh, 425. Now, he actually won the nursery uh, on tomorrow's card um, a four years ago, something like that. And uh, he's run well at the meeting a couple of times since he's he been, been lightly raced this season. In fact, he's only run once, and he was fourth in the John Smith's Cup, it was cracking run. Uh, and he actually got dropped a pound for it. Now, I know he's been just over three lengths, to get, but to get dropped a pound for running that well mm. in a massive field, uh, it sort of surprised me a little bit. And I think. I think he'll go well. Um, he should do. He's off a mark of 94. Perfectly reasonable mark. And in the closing race, I think that's 5.30. Uh, Beyond the Clouds ran behind Elysium Flame at Hamilton. Yeah, back uh, to. Uh, and the ground had got very soft. But I don't know what they the, the official forecast, what the official verdicts on the ground was that it's day. horrendous, wasn't it? But it was horrendous by then. Uh, whatever the form book says, uh, and I think he just got bogged down. I know he's won some soft ground bumpers, but we're, we're talking about competitive handicaps now, and it's completely different. Uh, and I just think he'll be much, much better suited to some quicker ground. He's a, he's a nice traveller, nice mover, uh, and definitely has more to come. Yeah. And now it's time for the Saturday naps. This will not be beaten. Paul Keeley, who's your nap? Yeah, I'm going to go for exec chef in a 3.30 at Newbury. I just think he does handle the course well and with the bookmakers giving four places, uh, I think he's a crack in each way, but a double figures. OK, Keith? Uh, Blue Laurie, an idea of absolutely brutal handicaps. As I say, his trial's a bit of a respite, I think, and uh, a horse that's just coming right like he is might be, might be the one to have. OK, thank you. And Darren, finally? Uh, Lambeth walk into 3 o'clock in there. Brilliant. Thanks all for your insight and your tips today. Best of luck over the weekend. I'll be back on Monday reviewing the weekend's action as per usual. In the meantime, best of luck with your selections and we'll see you soon. Paddy Power Games has over 250 of your favourites to play online and we're going to attempt to name them all in this 10-second ad before the T's and C's kick in. There's Blackjack, 18 plus, become aware.org.